Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is Monday, October the 14th, 2019. We're early this week because there's some early opportunities that I don't think are going to last. The Monday night football game between Green Bay and Detroit has yet to be played. It is literally 8.13 a.m. Pacific Time on Monday. October 14th, 2019. Here are the moves that I think need to be made before lines change. The first move is a futures move. Because Kansas City lost, the New England Patriots right now in the middle of October, believe it or not, have a two-game lead for home field advantage over everyone else in the AFC. Two-game lead. In my opinion, before this very low line drops even further, you need to take the New England Patriots at a plus 250 to win it all. I know it doesn't sound like you're getting value. You're getting great value. Understand, with this two-game lead in the AFC, which I don't think, based on the schedules, New England ever gives up, New England looks to me to be one of the two teams in the AFC that's going to get a first round bye. Right? Then, of course, they're going to play that first playoff game at home. Let me also say, too, that New England has a dominant defense. This might be the most dominant defense, certainly the most dominant secondary, that Bill Belichick has ever had. I encourage people to look at the defensive numbers. Factor in too that New England has been absolutely dominant at home. Right? This is one of the great teams playing at home. And when you realize that if they're the top seed in the AFC, right, they'll be at home possibly both playoff games. I think you can't look away from the plus two fifty. And, of course, compared to these other teams, New England has the experience edge. Who has been in more Super Bowls recently than Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Right? They know exactly how to handle the end of the season. They know exactly how to prepare for playoff games. Tom Brady has made a decision that he's going to spend the last few years of his career in Super Bowls. Right, The Patriots have been dominating the AFC. This year is no different. Except that now they have a two-game lead this early. With a much easier schedule than their competition. Teams like Kansas City. Teams like Houston. Teams like Baltimore. Let's also talk about the competition. Right, Kansas City isn't on par with the New England Patriots. Let's be real here. Kansas City has a bad offensive line. Kansas City has an average to below average defense. Right, just notice the amount of points that teams have been scoring against them. Let me also say, too, that quarterbacks who move a lot, who rely on movement in the pocket, right? Running quarterbacks. In this league, they don't last long. You look at a Cam Newton when he's straight out of college and you say, wow, he's big, he's fast, he moves. It's just a matter of time before he gets to his late 20s and he's dinged up. Think about the running quarterbacks or the quarterbacks who rely on movement, who've been dinged up, right? The list is too long to mention here. Let's just say that let's hope that Lamar Jackson is having an ongoing dialogue about the perils of moving out of the pocket with his backup, RG3. Now, I'm noticing with Pat Mahomes, last year, he's running in the pocket, isn't his thing, to move around the pocket, then he sees a guy who's open, he dupes the defense by looking someplace else, 
Then he throws a sidearm or baseball throw to some open receiver over on this side. Right? Isn't that his real game? Isn't that the unique thing that he brought to the party that the league was unprepared for last year? Well, guess what? Pat Mahomes is already dinged up. We're hearing about an ankle problem. If you've had an ankle problem, you know sometimes these ankle problems, especially when you need to keep playing, don't go away. So you're noticing that Pat Mahomes now, while he's trying to buy time, to move in the pocket so he can look one way and throw the other way, you're noticing that linemen are chasing him down. That Pat doesn't have a lot of time, especially since the offensive line in front of him isn't that good. Right? I think the NFL is a league that makes adjustments. I think players who enter the league with unique styles have a limited period of time in which to exploit that advantage before the Bill Belichicks of the world look on film and figure you out. Right? I think the league is starting to figure out Pat Mahomes. He's putting up great numbers, folks. He's putting up great numbers. He's doing it, too, with Sammy Watkins hurt, with Tyreek Hill out until this last game. Right? He's doing it with, you know, injuries. But the bottom line is, he's not as effective as he once was. You notice it late in games. Teams are hanging around. Right? Mahomes has to do things like get runs. You know, where he looks at the umpire, then takes off running, he has to save games this year. This year isn't last year. And, of course, let me just mention Kansas City has had injuries, right? Sammy Watkins is on my fantasy team. He was great the first week. He's been bagged up ever since. So I question, KC, last year the AFC Championship game was in KC, right? Yes, it was a competitive game. Yes, KC never got the ball in overtime. All of that is true, but the key is, do you believe KC can pull off that performance this year in New England? I have my doubts. I don't think KC challenges New England for supremacy in the AFC. Let's talk about Baltimore. I'll just say, in my opinion, and I know he's had great games, but Baltimore at this stage relies too much on Lamar Jackson's running. There were games, this, there were plays this weekend where the play was literally Lamar Jackson taking off to one side of the field. Now that catches teams by surprise in September and October. It's not going to catch anybody by surprise in the playoffs. Right? Let me just say too that Baltimore statistically is not an elite defense. Certainly, they're not the defense that the New England Patriots are. Finally, and this is how thin the AFC is this year, I only see one other team in the AFC that's competitive with the New England Patriots, right? I've already named two, KC and Baltimore. With all due respect to all of this new talent that has emerged, right, Minchu and others, the only other team in the AFC, in my opinion, that's competitive with New England are the Houston Texans. Now let me just be clear here. I'll agree that on any given Sunday, more in my opinion than any other player in the league, Deshaun Watson can beat you. Deshaun Watson can beat anybody on any given Sunday if things fall into place. Here's the problem. There's a huge injury risk with Deshaun Watson. Just look at the number of ACL injuries he's had. Just look at the touchdown he rushed for this last weekend where the game plan was for him to just run, go one-on-one -on -one with the lineman. Right? Juke him, then dive in the end zone. That was the play. Right? Also, Deshaun Watson just can't help himself. 
he needs to move out of the pocket and challenge defenders, right? This is different than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a guy who runs, sees you coming toward him, he slides, right? Russell Wilson is a baseball guy. Deshaun Watson is a football player, right? Deshaun Watson thinks he can run to the left and get three yards and he only needs two for a first down. That's the kind of high-risk gambler he is. It doesn't matter that Jack Tatum and Ronnie Lott and um, Atwater and guys like that are over on that side. Deshaun Watson's going to take his chances. The coaching staff can talk to him all day and say, please slide and stuff like that. Hey, it doesn't work with some guys. right? Andrew Luck retired. He knew he could not resist the urge to try to run over a linebacker to get that extra yard that his team needed. I believe that's Deshaun Watson. I believe there's always going to be an injury risk with Deshaun Watson. Also, let's face it too. I know Houston has big names. J.J. Watt is certainly a Hall of Famer, but Houston's defense is not on par with New England's defense. Right? Understand, New England has the AFC version of the San Francisco 49er defense, a defense that literally is just separate and distinct from everyone else. Right? If the Pittsburgh Steelers get it together, maybe they can compete defensively with the New England Patriots. The problem is Pittsburgh's without their Hall of Fame quarterback, so they'll never be able to compete with the Patriots in terms of offense. They're not a serious contender to the Patriots this year, like... KC, Baltimore, and Houston. So, I, I know it's early. I know it sounds crazy. I know a plus 250 is not that much. Right? You're not getting significant leverage with a plus 250. But I believe it's better than you're going to get later. In other words, as New England continues to show you that they're a dominant team, right? And as the gap between them and the Kansas cities of the world starts to become more and more apparent, as the betting world realizes that we're going to spend another January looking at playoff games in New England, right? Then I believe the plus 250 starts to become a plus 225, a plus 200, a plus 175. My point to you is, if New England stays healthy, and they're not even completely healthy right now, right? Isn't Josh Gordon banged up? But if New England stays relatively healthy, if Gilmore and Brady stay healthy, you're looking at a team that's going to have one of the two top playoff spots in the AFC. They're going to get a bye week. They're going to get that first playoff game at home. Sign me up, I'll take it at a plus 250. Sign me up. Okay, let's talk about the games I like week 7. I know we're early, but I believe with these lines, you need to hop on them right now because I don't think they last. Now, I'm back at it. I lost last week with Philly in Minnesota. I understand this is the second straight road game that Philly's playing. But wow, could they possibly be catching Dallas at a better time? You saw Dallas yesterday. They lost to the Jets. Amari Cooper, folks, he's banged up. He left in the first quarter. You really think that Dak Prescott's top wide receiver is going to be healthy and 100% for next week's game? I don't. Without Amari Cooper, we're back to the old Cowboys, aren't we? The Cowboys that struggled on offense. Speaking of struggling, did you notice how many carries it took Zeke to get the yardage he got yesterday? Zeke's struggling right now. Zeke's trending down. Zeke's lucky if he averages four yards a carry. So to me, the Cowboy offense is wounded. And let's face it, statistically, the defense is subpar. Statistically, the defense has not been getting it done. So here they are playing a team, and let's be charitable. 
that has a better quarterback, that has a better defense, that might even have Deshaun Jackson back for this game. And you mean to tell me that I'm getting Philly with three points? In other words, Philly loses by a field goal. I think to myself, okay, that's a push. Right? Philly would have to lose by more than a field goal to a tumbling Dallas squad. I like Philly plus three at Dallas in week seven. I have one other play. It'll be controversial. Thursday night. You know, I can hardly imagine a worse situation for a team to deal with than a short week after a grueling game that everyone was looking forward to because it was between two of the few viable teams in the AFC. Houston at KC. Deshaun Watson versus Pat Mahomes. You can imagine how emotionally taxing that game was. KC went out there. Tyreek Hill scores a couple of touchdowns. KC still loses. Houston makes big plays at the end. All the way up until the end. That last Houston first down, that was crucial. Houston is inside the 40. Decides not to kick the field goal. They decide to go for it on fourth down. Right against an explosive offense in KC. They go for it on fourth down. They make it. And it's the usual suspects. Deshaun Watson. To... DeAndre Hopkins, pass, complete, first down. Right, so to me, KC's emotionally drained. Now KC is going to go up against a defense you need to know about. They haven't given up a touchdown in the last two games. Folks, they haven't given up 20 first downs in either of the last two games. Vic Fangio, a defensive guy, the new coach of the Denver Broncos, has Vaughn Miller and company playing some of the best defense in the league. Now, I'll agree, the offense has sputtered a bit. But understand, Tennessee, the team they just beat, the, the team they just shut out, Denver's coming off a shutout win also has one of the best defenses in the AFC. Look it up statistically. Right? So you mean to tell me on a short week, Kansas City is going to play in high altitude after a draining game. They're going to be facing a Denver team that's already been in Denver. Right? That Denver-Tennessee game was in Denver. And you mean to tell me this Monday somebody in Vegas decided to give the Denver side of the play, the home team, three and a half points? No need to put a bow on the package. I'll take it. I like Denver getting three and a half points at home over Kansas City. Right? You just saw Pat Mahomes having a problem with Houston's defensive front. Folks, how is KC on a short week going to cure those offensive line problems against this Denver defense? By the way, Denver's 2-4, and four, right? Go back and look at the four losses Denver had. You're going to find some heartbreaking losses. Right? Field goals by the opposing team. In the closing seconds, Denver could easily be 500 or better. Look at the Denver-Chicago game. Right? Chicago was done. Mitch Trubisky pulled a rabbit out of a hat. Denver should have won that game. Right? So this Denver team at 2-4 and four undervalued. The defense is ignored because the team started poorly. This is an elite defense, catching KC at the right time. 
I like Denver getting three and a half points. You want the three and a half. You want the hook. Right? So if KC pulls out a last minute field goal, which seems to be a pattern in Denver games, right? You're still in the winner's circle with that extra half point. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you this week. Early, early picks. I like Philly getting three. I like Denver getting three and a half. And of course, I believe for long term betters, I like New England at a plus 250 to win it all, right? The picture wasn't clear for several weeks. We thought, oh, maybe Pat Mahomes and KC are going to take the next step. Right? Tom Brady's in his 40s. How's Brady going to hang with this new team, with Andy Reid and a prodigy at quarterback? Well, now it's in focus. The best defense in the league might be New England's. Right? Understand, a lot of the great defenses seem to be in the NFC. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry about the Niners and defenses like that. If and until you get to the Super Bowl. The best defense in the AFC is probably the New England Patriot defense. Just food for thought. Now we're also seeing that the league's made adjustments to Pat Mahomes. Now we're also seeing that some teams just don't have as much as we thought. Right? So you give Bill Belichick a two-game lead on the rest of the conference. Right? In the middle of October with a schedule that's easier than many of these other teams have. Right? To me, it's all laid out for him. Barring serious injury to keep players, right? Gilmore, uh, Brady, right? Barring some major injury, I think you're looking at a team in the catbird seat right now with the New England Patriots, right? Maybe they get derailed in the Super Bowl. Maybe one of these NFC teams. Philly, San Francisco, shows up in the Super Bowl and pulls a rabbit out of a hat. But understand the road to the Super Bowl in the AFC is going to go through New England. Right? You give New England the top seed, good luck beating them in either playoff game. You give them the two seed, we've seen this script before, New England will then win that playoff game, will get into the AFC Championship game. And unless they're playing Peyton Manning in Denver or something like that, the rest of the league's in trouble. Folks, what New England's doing right now is historical. Going to back-to-back -back Super Bowls like they have? The only reason no one's talking about it is because Tom Brady threw for over 500 yards against Nick Foles and the Eagles and lost the game. Otherwise, we'd be looking at the Super Bowl and we'd be thinking, my God, New England again? you got to be kidding me. As an aside, that Super Bowl that they lost, Tom Brady's quarterback performance in that Super Bowl was the best statistical quarterback performance in a Super Bowl in history. 